happens oh, if I yeah. did that? Might be nice. Shades. <laughs> Out. You like DJ J Man in the house? <clears throat> the <clears throat> the fade outs always impress me because we do we do a morning role play call at Element, and I play like motivational stuff beforehand, and we, sometimes it just stops and it sounds real bad, and other times I can do like the downward sound, you know, the fade out. So today um, I did the perfect. It was perfect time. The video was still playing, but it was the perfect break to do that little fade out. And, and Brad, the gentleman who runs the role plays, was like. You know, I rank you on your fade outs and tonight, today was like a nine. Like it was perfect timing, perfect. It was like one minute after one, it was like uh, 9.31 or whatever time it is there. 8.31 there, perfect timing. Anyway, I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton and that is... Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, coming <coughs> to you live. Welcome to the Indubitably Podcast. The podcast. Indubitably. Nothing to say about nothing. Hello to Wendy Lee and... Billy B B B Billy P and B. <laughs> double J's well, are double in the J. building. We got Carrie Rose is here too. Did you I say Billy in Bean Town? It's Billy P in the B Town. Oh, I, I just said Bean Town because you know B Town's Boston. <laughs> I'm from New York. I don't it's know anywhere Boston. in Massachusetts. I don't believe you. Uh, thank you for all the trust today. Very, very believing in me. Every day. Every day. I, I believe I am a Bills fan. And, and I, just want, I just want to point out, me and J-Man are not sharing AirPods. Turn your head. Turn your head. The other way. The other way. We're not sharing. So it looks like you have one and I have one. It's like the, it's the matching set. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I'm looking at And look, look, I have, I have a, like a dark jacket on it. So do you. One of these things is not like the other. My color of my shirt is different. You have an element shirt? I got the element on. Got okay. The element on today. Well, folks, welcome to the Indubitably podcast. And today we are much to say about nothing. If you want to bring up a topic, please feel free to put it in the comments. We can and will and have talk about anything on the planet. Uh, the thought was today... <laughs> This is Jeffrey every for every episode. What are we going to talk about today? And I suggest something. He goes, eh, eh, I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> that's pretty much. That's exactly what I'm like. Eh, eh, eh. And I'm like, you know, it. Uh, feel free to make a suggestion, Jeffrey <clears throat> Scott Stanton. Well, in, in the now, actually, in the comments, feel free to make a suggestion. Besides, Tiffany saying on Instagram, you guys are a cute couple. That's very cute, Tiffany. <laughs> He carries so my is books there to a, class. Is there a topic? And he ties my shoes for me. So we're good. So is there a topic that you guys want us to chat about today? I'm looking on uh, the book face. Cha-ching! Dang it. You know, I'm I ran out of time today. Face. I was, I'm going to make an in, indubitably soundbite that I'm going to use. As, I, might, I might just record it. <clears throat> just go indubitably. We should do it in unison. We should do it in unison. Okay. Ready? I have Three. this. I'll record myself doing it in Billy and I'll send it to you and you record yourself. And then Billy is asking, how do you come up with content for live? Have you ever watched our live videos before when me and him aren't together? What do you mean? How do we come up with content? We don't. We just have much uh, to say about nothing. Hey, uh, pardon <clears throat> me. Jeffrey can speak for himself because he's like one topic to 17 is the score at this point, nope. folks. Last week was my topic. Last week was my topic. What? It started out with you picking the topic, and I hijacked it to branding. All right, true. Yeah. There was a hijacking. Yeah. That I went totally because I wanted nothing to do with your time. So can I actually? I, so I was at I was in Dallas on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, just beat the snowstorm out of out of New York, or actually after the snowstorm. I was in out Minnesota. Of New York. You were in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. it, well, this is the thing in Dallas. I didn't realize how cold it can get in Dallas. In the I mean, it was 61 day that it was 50 something and they're getting snow at the end of the week. So I was there and it's called, um, it was an HR and educators fusion. So there's like 25 oh. of us 
from different, it's that. totally different industries. Everybody's from different industries and it's HR and training people, you know, and directors, training directors, you know, everybody's SVPs and above. And, okay. um, well, the story it was really, it was really cool because it's one of those where you actually get to learn from people in other industries. Yeah, I like which that. I actually enjoy going to those more than I actually do real estate stuff because like there's not a lot of new real estate things. There's new there's new tech, but to me you can learn so much from outside the industry that you're able to bring in that you can potentially bring into the industry and that's why I always like going to those non in, non real estate related Stop hitting me you know, in my back. Am I hitting you? I'm sorry. Not <laughs> Then just because you maybe carry your books, non real estate related stuff, um, because you have to learn. So part of this was about diversity, diversity, inclusion, you know, because that's, that's, it, it big, should go, it, yeah, it should that's go diversity, equity, and inclusion. Cause if not, the acronym says die. So, oh, yes. D I no D E I diversity, inclusion, and equity, diversity, equity, diversity, equity, and inclusion, yeah. <clears throat> which was really cool. And, you know, they're talking about, and there was the person who was head of um, DI for PNC Bank. Um, and she's also the, the chair of, of GLAD in New York City. And uh, 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 Mark Health and, and, you know, tons of different things. And so everybody's sharing like, oh, this is what we do with HR. This is what we do in training. <clears throat> and when we got on the subject of diversity, <clears throat> it was... You know, I think all companies have to look at how diverse is your agent population or your employee population. That's one thing. And I think a lot of companies look at that. But one of the things when I say, because ultimately I'm in sales when I was speaking to the woman before, and I said, ultimately I'm in sales. So I look at everything, you know, it's sales, everything's sales based. Even though I'm training, it, it's it's sales. <clears throat> so she goes, I would go to your, your agents and I'll go to this. I would go to all of you on here and say, how diverse is your consumer? Like if you went back and you looked at your consumer over the past three years, how diverse is the consumers that you have? And like, it may be eye opening, and it, it may not be that you're you're doing, um, uh, 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 you know, that you're being prejudicial or racist or or, or there's a, a fair housing issue there. There may might there may be. However, is are your clients diverse? Or are you only dealing with people like you? And, and I thought it was interesting when she brought that up. And I'm like, you know what? We, we look at it as from a company. We're a very diverse company. But do you look at it like your clients? That was asking you, G man. Sorry, I drifted off. I was reading. <laughs> I was reading <laughs> over here. Uh, no, but it is a good point. Like, is there diversity in your clientele? Um, because if you want to be diverse, maybe you got to change your marketing message, change your branding. Because uh, maybe it only speaks to a certain demographic. Because that's yep. kind of kind of ties in what we talked about last week. But we have a couple questions here. Uh, one from Tiffany. <laughs> She's always so funny. How about this as a topic? Listing agents, put your damn cell phone numbers on the listing already. There's no Why? way all the information is for everyone to know. There is just needs to be easily accessible. Or have somebody that can answer questions about the listing. Yeah. Be accessible. Have, have somebody there. But let's go back to Billy P because I do uh, plan my content for live videos. Not all of them. Yes. You, you may notice that I am live twice a week consistently, once with you and then once on Fridays. And then there's many times in between that it'll just be impromptu type stuff. Uh, this mm -hmm. week I was in Minnesota at David Knox Productions recording some stuff. And I'm like, man, while I'm here... This guy's an industry like veteran, been around. Absolutely. And I'm like, Phew. he's like, you gonna do a live, J man? I'm like, I am now. As soon as I pull my phone, I was like, let's do it. And so that was fun. But what I do look at, and this is where those of you, if you're on Clubhouse or you're in a lot of those real estate groups that have tens of thousands of people, the best way to curate content, and it depends on who your audience is. Like Jeffrey and I, our audience here would be real estate agents, right? Or, mm -hmm. or people in sales or in, in, in business for themselves because it can a lot of the concepts apply to everybody. But go into a group like that. LinkedIn is, is another good one. And then see what 
what's relevant, what's resonating with the people. Somebody may suggest a topic, and then it's like comments like this. <coughs> I saw today uh, somebody talking about, hey, if you want to know more about NFTs, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and the multiverse, multiverse, that's this flash, <laughs> and the metaverse, and the metaverse, you know, type in the comments. And there was like 100 plus comments. And that tells me my metaverse idea, if you, if you heard it here again, folks, future expert of the metaverse, Jeremiah's J. Man Monero, uh, resonates with people. But then also if in, you're in like a We Love Greece New York page or anything else where you see mm -hmm. people commenting <clears throat> on things, that's where you get your, your content from. Or a great, a great way to come up with content is, especially if you're talking to the consumer, is look at the Google Trends for your area in real estate. What are people searching? Are they searching first time home buyers, real estate? Are they searching home improvements? Like look at what's trending on the Google analytics to yeah. find out what people are searching for. And if you see, you know, you're in, you know, go back to Billy cause it's Billy in B town that if you see in Billings, people are searching for ranches and Billings. I don't even know if there are ranches and Billings. I know there's ranches outside of Billings there's that like ranches and there's ranches. Well, no, I meant ranches as in like horse ranches, like cattle, okay. like that type of thing. So it might be that they might be, you know, when you look at the Google analytics, as far as what are the search, and you go to Google and you, Google, how to find out what people are Googling for. That's the easiest way of doing it. Right. And it'll tell you what keywords you're looking for. It'll say like, it'll, how much over asking will my offer be? What should I do in multiple offers? Offers. How much list price, sale price? You know, you'll, you'll get really up to date and they'll tell you stuff that's even trending in your area. Yeah. And, and that, I think that's a great way. And I'll give you a little, a little secret <clears throat> that we do sometimes. What was that? Go ahead. No, I'm going to Google something because I forgot what, it, what the site was. But go ahead. <laughs> Jamin's Googling, Googling. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, on Wednesday we do, in, it was part of the Element podcast series, we do a DE construct, a real estate DE or a deconstructed. <clears throat> and honestly, sometimes I don't have a topic at all. But right before it, well, I don't have a topic that I'm set on that we're going to talk see. about. So right before it, we actually have a role play call. And a lot of times I'll sit on that role play call. And it's one of those where like three or four agents are talking about the same exact thing. And this week when we did it, it was on how to set expectations with your buyers and sellers, because a lot of times those buyers being the market that we're in now, agents aren't setting the expectations of like, Hey, you're going to have to place a bunch of offers. You're going to have to go X amount of a list. Hey, you're looking for a million dollar property. If you want to pay a million dollar, you're probably going to have to look at an $800,000 property and bid it up to a million. <clears throat> so that was the, about setting those expectations. And to me, just like you can Google what people are searching for in your area, that, that role play call directly before my podcast was, it's a great way of, this is what agents want to hear about. This is what people are talking about. You were Googling something, so I guess you were looking something oh. up to. Oh, you just shared your screen. I can't hear you now. We can't hear you. You shared your screen and we can't hear you. You can hear me now. I can hear you now. One second. I'm going to add you here. So just keep talking. I'm going to add a little squircle of you. So J-Man just decided to do uh, something off that. I have no idea what that is. What is that? No, that's you. That's Give me a right. second. Just well, I don't know what Jamin's doing second, on, on that. I'm just going to talk to the people. Uh, I can tell you why the front desk doesn't know how big the bedrooms are. And I have clients and kids that are the bedrooms big enough. Oh, that that was, um, this is just a train wreck. That was Tiffany asking about the. Um, it's not a train wreck here. I'm putting you over here. Okay. Do you know what you're looking at now, Please. sir? No, I can't see it. It's tiny on my screen. Oh, this is answer the public. So I did a search. There's three, 391 reser results for real estate. These are the top results. And when you look at, uh, if I come in here and I make this a little bit. Okay, so these are when somebody searches for real estate, it ranks them. The darker the green the more it's searched for. So can real estate make you rich? Can real estate agents make millions? Can real estate agents say no pets? Can real estate agents make you a millionaire? All these other things. Can real estate agents disclose offers? 
There is 391 ideas here on, on what you can do for live video. And that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And it's relevant. You know, if this is what people are searching for. If you speak to what people are interested in searching for, more people are going to, you know, listen, if, if, listen, <clears throat> if I was an agent now and I had to come up with live video, I mean, I'm just based upon the markets that we're in, that was music playing, just based upon the markets that we're in is it would be, you know, I would talk about multiple offers and what buyers can expect placing multiple offers that, you know, you're going to have to bid. You know, there's a lot of, again, on the role play this morning, <clears throat> one person said, Hey, I had a, a, a listing that went live on Sunday on Monday morning. We had 137 offers, 137 offers, 50 of them ask price list price or higher. Do you think that if I was that agent, I would absolutely be having that conversation? That's what we mean by live videos. Explain Slow it to buyers. Wait, wait, wait. That... Go back. Let's go back. 157, you said, and then 50 plus, 50-ish were 50, over asking? It was 50-something that were, that were over asking. So 100 or so people have no clue. Yeah. If you look at it, it's two thirds. If you're doing it that way, two thirds of people don't understand the real estate market that they're in. <clears throat> so if I was that agent, I would I would go live on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and say, "Hey, Jeff Stanton, Douglas Elm, you know what? We had a listing this weekend that you know first open house was on Sunday, went live on Sunday. Monday we had and go through the whole entire process. And I explained the reason why I'm live now, giving you the scenario. So I want to let you to know." If you're a buyer in today's market, in this market, in my market, this is what you can expect. And go through the process of expect there to be multiple offers, expect there to be overbidding. Again, if you're looking at a fight in some of the areas, if you're looking at a four hundred thousand dollar home and you know house is getting bid up, you're probably not gonna look at a four hundred thousand dollar list price home. You're probably gonna look at a three sixty list price home. Right. Most of my areas, you know, hey, if you're looking at a $2 million property, guess what? Don't look at a $2 million list property. If you only want to pay $2 million, you're probably going to have to look at a 1.5, 1.6 because it's going to get bid up two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. Yeah. And, and I think if we're, we're giving it, here's a good live stream advice, folks. Study, study the market, really be a student of the game, mm -hmm. not just your comps, like what's what has sold or what's currently on the market and what's pending, but you have to go really analyze that data and say, just like Jeffrey said, I know that on average for me in my market, it's around 20% over asking that stuff sells for when it's, when it's competitive, do you have dogs that sell around asking, or do you have some in the rarity that sell below in the like five percentile that sell below for whatever <coughs> reason? Yeah. But if I know that number, then I can go in and have a, a conversation with my client and say, look at on average, a note. this property that's at 500 will sell for 600, right? 20% over asking is another hundred grand over. So if we want to get it, we should, we should be in the 25 to 30%. I like to use percentages rather than, rather than dollar signs. Cause you know, 20% over dollar signs can scare people. Yeah. It's like 20% uh, over or we got to go a hundred thousand dollars over asking. You know, and in my in our case, in most markets, you're talking about five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars above asking. <clears throat> so, Jamie, you pointed something out there as far as like the pricing. So, let me switch this a, a little bit too, because I, I think it has to do with what we're talking about. To me, and I I would love this. This I think this would be great content for sellers. Is even though sellers are selling for the highest price they've sold in history in most areas, what are you doing? You keep hitting me with your huge hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> even if I, I'm Italian, I talk with my hands. Hey, even hey. if sellers are selling at the highest price they've ever sold at, list price versus you know sales price, sellers are now want to price their homes even higher. And if you notice, this is what's happening, and I've actually looked at the data on this. Same house, and we'll just use an easy number. I'm using a million dollars because it's an easy number to work with. Um, One million. Cut it in half if you're into 500,000. So a million dollars. If I think that home's going to sell for 1.3, and I list it at 1.3, that home will actually sit on market longer than if I listed at a million 
and it gets bid up to 1.3 1. 1. or 1. 1.5 or or 1. 1.5 because what's happening is this people even though they can afford to pay more they're looking at lower price starting so if i can afford to pay 1.3 i'm looking at those million dollar homes i'm not even looking at that 1.3 because i know that's going to go up so when a house is priced properly when a house is priced Such competitively point, and properly yeah. it actually sells for more than if you overpriced the house to begin with yeah and and a, a good example we had one where it was right on it was more than we wanted but it was right on right on the cusp and people were the saying range of possibility yeah and they're like do you like it yes would you write an offer yes well why aren't you <clears throat> we just don't want to go that high like what do we mean that high well, when there's multiple offers, we don't want to compete that high. We would pay the price that it is right now, but we don't want to pay what it's going to be marketed up to now, or multiple offers up to. If you would have priced it at the lower end of the range of possibility, right? those people would have started placing offers. Once you have someone place an offer, their commitment to the house actually increases. So first offer, I'm committed to the house. Some people are going to walk away if it's a bit more. Some people are going to stay. But you generally can get people to – it's the reason why auctions work and people bid up. You get into the excitement of it and the competitiveness that, again, say like the high end of the range was a million dollars, but the low end of the range was 800000 People are like, ah, I don't want to offer a million because I know it's going to go more than that. But if you get me in at that, that first offer of eight fifty, I might go up to a million fifty. I might go up to 1.1 if I have that money because I'm getting involved in the game and I'm going to continue to play the game. <clears throat> and I think that's a great, that would be a great live video to have for sellers. You know, it's, you think you're going to get more for your house, but really in negotiations, this is the anchoring. What price am I going to anchor the competition to start at? You know, to me, that'd be a great live video. Well, and and have relative stories, right? Have factual yeah. data like here's a property. Once it's public information, right? Here, here's a property. Here's what it was listed for. Here's what, and here's what it's sold for. We, depending on whether you're the listing agent or not, or whatever the scenario is, but relative mm -hmm. stories people can remember. I was just speaking to a buyer today, and he's like, I want to go see this house, but I'm not sure how much it's going to go over. And I gave him a relative story. I said, Hey, this other house that I looked at in that same area went 36 percent over asking it's like 36 percent i'm like yeah 169.9 it sold for 231 he's like what i'm like nothing in that neighborhood has ever sold over 200 ever okay and this one's selling for 231 so he's like because he was worried about a an appraisal issue i'm like that that's the least of our worries you know it's just do you yeah. feel comfortable you know the list price is nothing more than a suggestion are you feel do you feel comfortable with <clears throat> what your mortgage would be and that's what you're willing to pay period the, and this is what I love, especially for when you're talking to sellers about the list price. The list price is the invitation to the party. That's the invitation that we're putting out there for people to jump in on our party of placing offers on your house. That's how you have it's to think of it. Party you want that invitation. Want like if, if you get if you get an invitation to, you know, not a kid's party and it's printed out on on, you know, Eight and a half by eleven, that. folded four times, like you used to also, used to do in what was that? A Microsoft wasn't not what was that? Microsoft started with a P. Microsoft Publisher you used to do like those cards and stuff in, and then you fold you know the four corners to make it actually look like a card. If you got a card that was printed out yes. on regular paper, folded to look like a card, or to a wedding, or you actually got a nice wedding invitation, which is a better chance of you attending? Are you thinking well? This was a cheap card, so I don't have to pay as much, you know, at the wedding. I don't have to give as much of a gift. Or you're saying, you know what? I'd rather go to that one. I bet you it's going to be much nicer. So you open you have it up to make... and then rose petals fall at your feet and then trumpeters yep. show up. And you're like, dang. You have Jeez. to make it look as nice as possible. And I think that's the same thing on that buyer side is you have to make your offer look as nice as possible. And again, all this type of all this stuff we're having conversations now is to me is the same conversations you can have online as live videos. So to me, it's what do people want to hear? That's my, that's my, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Speaking of what do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? What do you want us else to talk about? The rest of the story. 
You remember that on the radio? I think it was Paul Harvey. I used to listen to that as a kid with my dad. Yep, it was Paul Harvey. You know the rest of the story. Yes. One day, Jeremiah walked into a real estate office. And now you know the rest (laughs) of the story. (laughs) That's it. Shorten it up. Shorten it up. Well, can I just say another thing? A few live videos. Yeah. And and, and you, you know this better than anyone else. Be yourself. Like, don't be that news prompter type of person. You know, you're back in the darkness. Don't be that news type of that. You're some news character. Hi, and what? Let me tell you about what's going on in the market today. Unless that's really you. Then go ahead. But go ahead. I, I see so many. I see so many real estate agents post stuff, and I know these real estate agents personally. And I'm like, that's not that's you. Not you. Like your friends aren't even commenting on your stuff because they know you're a phony when you're posting this stuff. Be yourself. Phony. And this is the thing. You you come off inauthentic or unauthentic? Inauthentic? Inauthentic. Inauthentic? Unauthentic? Inauthentic. Whichever one it is. You come off one of those two you come off one of those two ways. Not real. Not real. Thank you. That's much better. Shit. I don't know. That's a good one. Someone tell us in the chat. Tell us <laughs> Someone, in the chat. Someone tell us in the chat. We're better at speaking than uh, spelling. Indubitably. No, I can't. No, I can't spell. Do, you know, do, do, do. J-Man, 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 J-Man. No. What? No, no. That, the OK symbol or OK symbol was canceled. Can't use the OK symbol. Can't. I don't know what you're saying. I'm, and This is the indubitably sign. I know you're you're trying to do the new release. Sorry, I just want to point out there. You, I know you I, weren't doing that my, symbol. My signs don't get canceled. <laughs> <clears throat> Next week on Much is About Nothing, just with Jeff Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> just with Jeff Stanton. Uh, poor Whoopi Goldberg. We won't talk about that, but. Yeah. It's oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Now I'm not going to talk about it. Never mind. No, let's not. But Do you know what I was going to talk like about? To talk right? about is repurposing. Did you know what I was like, going to talk about? No, I don't want to know. If you, you said the ooh, ooh, ad ooh. post that someone did that post in the training. Oh no, no we don't. <laughs> no, nope. no, no, no. I thought like, probably not. No. <laughs> Let's not talk about that one. So where is your Bitmoji, Jeffrey? We're on week four I, now. I, I've been so busy that I haven't done the Bitmoji. I have been so busy, but I, I will do the Bitmoji at some point. Hello, Jeffrey. Why aren't you doing bit OG? <laughs> <laughs> this is Jeffrey's bit OG. This is so much better. Oh God, I just uh, can't. But let's talk about repurposing the live videos because what I do, because I do this every single week, every single week when I'm going to send out a promo for the next week, I just look because I I always have to go into our recording. And you chop the, the stupidest part minutes. that I'm trying to dance, and then that's what he uses. Yeah, well, that now Jeffrey's starting to dance a little bit because he's like, damn it, he's going to keep using this, so I might as well do something. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yep. last week, or the one that I sent out today for, for this week, which was from last week, he did say, I, ma- I managed to catch the part where he said, oh, the live streaming uh, champion, the live streaming guru or something, but I got him saying that. I have him on video saying, the live streaming guru... <sighs> But then you, you followed up with like, decided to restart his computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, you started out with live streaming guru. That's fine. But I repurpose every everything that I do. So just take that's that one, little one minute. That's going to be said in an echoey voice on the, on on the intro to all his podcasts now. And it's going to be the live streaming guru, and it's going to be quoted by Jeffrey Stanton. That's, he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. <laughs> ah, thank you. Hold on, oh, I gotta... did I just give you that idea? Damn it. It's my intro. Damn it. <laughs> and then also, indubitably, we got to record. <clears throat> but I do repurpose that. And then also, there's one one little thing that I've been working on the last, I want to say, 10 days. It's going to be added to my my YouTube class. Class. The Rochester accent came out there for a second. Yes, it did. But you, so YouTube Shorts, and, and it's so funny how all the different platforms influence each other, right? When, yep. when IGTV came out, they were like, "We're only doing vertical because we're we want people to create vertical content for us. Screw YouTube, mm-hmm. we want the creators to make vertical video just for us." And then they're like, 
creators aren't creating vertical videos just for us. They're uploading horizontal, you know, uh, horizontal mm -hmm. vi lands or, yeah, landscape this way, sideways. So you got to turn your phone and they're putting in there, turn your phone. So they're not really creating unique content. Long story shorter, now YouTube has YouTube shorts, 60 seconds or less, right? Influenced by TikTok and Reels. I actually enjoy them. Of course. I actually enjoy spin. them more than TikToks. Yeah, there, there's, and some of those are just repurposed TikToks. It all depends on where it, where it starts are. first, right? Yeah. And so I was I've been doing a lot of research because I upload every week. I'm trying to be consistent with my YouTube, trying to grow my presence on there. And so I'm like, let me try something with this YouTube shorts. And I do, and they're like, okay, you got to be consistent. You got to kind of identify what you want your niche to be. And then within that niche, whether you want to be educational, entertaining, comedic you know what what is it about what you're talking about that resonates with your edutainment. audience edutainment edutainment yeah and so i i have a ton of short content like tiktoks and reels that i've created so then i'm like let me just test it out and i start reposting that stuff onto youtube shorts in 10 days i have gained over 100 subscribers on my youtube channel just from this Okay, because I average when I look at I average only thirty new subscribers a month, roughly one a day, right? Organically, I'm not doing anything else but just being consistent and and growing it that way. Well over a hundred in in the ten days, just from YouTube Shorts because they're grabbing they they need this content so bad, and they're mm -hmm. what they do is they take your short, and they pull it and they go, okay, this looks like it might be funny. Let me show it to people that are watching funny stuff. Yep, and if they watch it. If they give you a like, and it, what they really care about is uh, retention, how long they watch the video. So the 15-second video, great. They could watch half that. You're well better off than us uploading this one-hour video, and you're, there's no way you're going to watch half of it, mm -hmm. the majority of the people. So I, I would get with it. Get with the program, folks. Yeah, I, I noticed that too, that it really does. And what I like actually how YouTube does it is because YouTube actually class categories as funny videos. And you, like on mine, I actually see it. So if I'm like, you know, let me scroll through some funny stuff. Oh, let me scroll through some motivational stuff. Let me scroll. So getting that 60 seconds and I literally will watch and you're right. The 60 second ones to me, I don't watch as much as I'll watch the full 30 second one. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the guys who are at 60 are really good because they, they give you a hook in the beginning. Hey, guys, guess what? We're going to teach you how to grow yeah. your, your YouTube shorts quickly and with over a million subscribers in the next 10 days. Watch to the end of this video. Wait till the end of the like, video. Like, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, finally, he gives you five seconds at the end or something. And then you miss it and you're like, oh, crap, I got to watch it again because you can't fast forward through it. So now he got me viewing it four or five times to write down what he just said. I'm like, yeah. son of a bitch got me. Yeah, some of so, that bitch got me. YouTube Shorts. Maybe we'll talk about that next week, or we just did. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Shorts next week. Yeah, I'm a fan of Shorts, especially in Florida. Stupid, <laughs> <You're> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so bump. Stupid. I don't even know what we talked about today. To be quite honest with you, <laughs> we talked about offers. We talked about this. I was going to talk about well, real estate investing, and you really shot me down. This is what I want you guys to think about for next week. If you want this, put it in the comments if you made it this far. Yeah. I want to talk about all other ways that you can make money in real estate besides actually selling homes, like property management, like owning your own real estate, like referrals, like, 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 like. There's a number of different ways that you can make money because all of this – is designed so that yeah. The only thing I just ask is that you don't stop putting in. Oh, my broker franchise. We get like that's not the stuff we want to hear. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, see, Billy Parrot said yes. Thank you, Billy. Billy always says yes. No, she shot us down a couple times on some things. Uh, oh, I, anybody sorry, else? What, what do you what do you think about that? Like, my thought is that's part of my retirement strategy. Is is I always take a little bit from every transaction that gets saved. Because you're not buying a couple hundred thousand dollar house or three hundred thousand, I'm saving up enough to have twenty percent down to buy another house. Right? You're leveraging your credit. Uh, we're not buying anything cash, and then we we buy it, put a renter in there. Now that's twenty year mortgage. That's our retirement strategy. That's our pension. You know, plan. <clears throat> I was talking. We were talking to an agent. It was actually yesterday, and they're like, "Listen, I have I have this buyer. 
He's got the money. He can buy it all cash. He just refuses to, and he's getting beat out by offers. And I'm trying to convince the guy to buy it all cash. <clears throat> so I said, give me the guy's background, this and that. And there was no way the guy was going to buy cash. The guy has tons and tons of money. But with the interest rates today, why would you ask someone to pull cash out of an investment that's making them a much he greater return, probably. you know, much greater return or borrow it at three and a half, three and three quarters, four percent. I'm like, that's the reason why he's smart. That's right. the reason why he's not doing it. It's like you may have to have the conversation of, hey, let's put down more. And then if you want to refinance and pull that money back out like that, it's like, oh, that's a good idea. Because, again, smart, smart people right now aren't buying things cash, at least not homes. I'm going to buy Metaverse real estate. Money. Yours. You're going to buy my Metaverse? I'm not, sell I'm not selling my Metaverse real estate. I have a neighborhood called uh, J Manville. And, uh... <laughs> well, I have a neighborhood called Indubitable. <laughs> indubitable town. Indubitable island. <laughs> In the metaverse. Wait. Stop it. <laughs> he was writing down the indubitable. I'm trademarking that as soon as we get off of this thing. All right, Jeremy, anything else? Because I actually have, for those of you, I see some element people watching. We actually have a, a special session with uh, one of Tony Robbins' top coaches today for our element people. Um, that starts at two o'clock my time, so I do need to get on there. Okay. See you later, Jeffrey. Do we, Jamie, you want to jump on? I'll give it a link. Do you want to join? Huh? Dun, 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 no, dun. you don't even. You don't even invite me on anymore. You during the pandemic, you were like, "Oh, you got the virtual agent." We did that, I think, and then we did messenger bots, and then. Do Do you want to have this know? conversation right now, or do you want to wait till next week? Okay, we'll talk next week. It's a big surprise. <laughs> well, oh. whistle me Dixie. Well, Something? whistle me Dixie. Well, whistle me Dixie. <laughs> Look on your face. Did that well whistle me Dixie actually work? Yeah, I heard it. All right. See you, Jeff. I'm going to want... talk you... to the people while you're gone. Do you want the link? No, you're not allowed to. Yeah, That's I can. No. Yeah. No. Don't, don't. It'll be all recorded. FOMO. You don't have to I got FOMO, FOMO now. I, see, don't no, FOMO, I don't want you to say about me once I leave. No FOMO, I don't want you to say about me once I leave. I know what you're going to say about me once I leave. No, we're going to talk about real estate investing or whatever else comes up. We're going to talk about that next week. You don't. You don't want. You want. You don't want to jump in a session. I'll. I'll let you. I'll let you in. You got a Tony Robbins guy. He's doing all the talking. What do you want me? To, I'm gonna watch. I can't sit and watch. Why can't you sit and watch? Oh, I've got who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> now we can talk about Jeffrey Scott Stan. See, Michelle said it. No, see, I'm gonna stay here and I'm just gonna start to zoom on my phone or something. Is it a Zoom webinar or Zoom? Uh, you guys do webinars, meeting. Lot, right? No, we actually oh, do meeting. We do this. We're doing this as a meeting. Yeah. Send me the link, man. I'll pop in. I'm just gonna pop in. I won't say a word. I'm gonna have my dope Zoom background. They're gonna like, who's that? Who's that? Bye. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> um, I was gonna say who's that boy, and then I said I was gonna say who's that man, and then I said who's that guy. I messed it up. Uh, well, I have a minute, so I'm staying on for a minute to make sure you don't say anything about me. Wait, what did Michelle say? Michelle, do we know each other? Yeah, you met her in Atlanta at the RIA conference. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. From where? Uh, Chicago Michelle, where are you area. From? Illinois. Chicago. The problem Illinois. is I don't, have, there's no, I don't see a photo, so I really can't tell. You can't see a photo? I see it. No, I don't see. You have a different view than I do. Um, 
Well, folks, uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have... Yeah, we had drinks together from Chicago. See, you don't even remember. Oh, we were sitting at the bar. You were sitting at the bar. I came over and met... Yes, I know. Okay, yep, I know what it is. Oh, my gosh. You got to really give Jeffrey a couple memory joggers. Yeah, I, I know who you are now. I almost think he was hit in the head when he was younger or something. He's got, like, concussion syndrome or... What, what, why why are you going to make fun of me? I'm not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, this is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. And I am Jeffrey Scott Stanton, and I have FOMO. That's the reason why I'm making J-Man. <laughs> See you later. Outro music. Uh, this is Jeremiah's, and Jeffrey has FOMO. Don't you?